Good morning. It's a big honor for me to be here in Ahmedabad, and uh, thank you for giving me this invitation. Nitish, I think, called six months back, real advance notice, and uh, you know everything, all the hospitality has been so perfect. So I'm really happy to be here with you. Uh, my talk today is on my child is struggling in school. And many of you will be in your outpatient departments, in your clinics, and parents will be saying this, right? So what can you do as a pediatrician? Uh, how does this move forward? Last one? OK. <laughs> Wait, I've got maybe point this back. OK. So actually, the question is, what can be done in 10 minutes? Because you have another maybe 40, 50, 60 children waiting outside. So I've been given half an hour, so I'll try to finish uh, in that amount of time. So my first question is, why do children do badly in school? Just any ideas, quickly. We don't have time. <laughs> Pardon? Poor, poor concentration. Yes, of course. OK, so no motivation to go to school. They're unhappy, and yes. Great. Neglected time. Sleep, they have not slept. Neglected time. Okay, so parents are not supervising the studies, maybe? Okay, yes. Effective atmosphere is not available. Atmosphere is not available. So the proper environment to promote learning is not available. Yeah, so there's so many causes, right? So we can divide these into. Um, <laughs> can I just use this? I just use it. Yeah, this is simpler. So, um, yeah, so causes within the child. Right, so all the developmental causes, which we will be looking at in a little while from now. And two is, oops. okay, causes which are in the environment of the child. So like you said, you know, parents are not supervising or uh, the child's uh, kind of the environment is not uh, conducive for learning and so on. So I'm going to come to the last chapter right away and then we will work backwards. So if you look at what are the common causes of learning difficulties, any uh, technical terms? Pediatricians? Dyslexia. Dyslexia, yes. What else? Why else do children fail in school? Thank you. Yes. So specific learning disability or dyslexia, OK? Uh, two, intellectual disability. So a child who really doesn't have the cognitive capacity to keep up with the school curriculum. ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, which can also cause learning difficulties. Hearing and vision, as Dr. Nitish said. Emotional distress. So the child has been facing some, quite often a trauma in the environment, but their response is one of you know, anxiety and depression and so on. And of course, I don't know if you face this in Ahmedabad, but we see a lot of this in Goa where children are from a home where either you know, Konkani or Marathi or Hindi is being spoken. And now, of course, because Goa has so many uh, migrant families, uh, it could be Telugu, it could be Gujarati, and so on. But parents want what medium of instruction? English. English. OK, so these children who haven't really heard English, they don't have any printed books or you know, newspapers in their home in English are now forced to learn in the medium of instruction, which is totally foreign to them. And this leads to a lot of learning problems. And of course, uh, poor teaching, which is, again, children are not taught how to read. They're just expected to know how to read. OK, so this is also common. And therefore, if we look at the original kind of um, categories, these first, this first lot is within the child, outside the child within the child, okay? So that's what I mean by developmental reasons. And this lot is in the environment. So not uh, enough exposure to the medium of instruction and poor teaching uh, methods, because our teachers are not trained how to teach children to read, write, and spell. Okay, so quickly the story of Aradhna. She's a nine-year-old girl. She's studying in standard four. And she has been having difficulties in writing since preschool, so for many, many years now. And she makes many spelling mistakes when she writes. But she's very good in the oral answers. I want you to think of each of the sentences here. She doesn't like to read, but she has learned to read by rote. So even with the book closed, she can read. She makes careless mistakes in maths, and she doesn't know what computation to do in word problems. So uh, you know, sometimes she can do if just numbers are given, add 
whatever, 10 plus uh, 20, she can do that. But if you say that, you know, Mohan had 10 apples and then uh, Pratik gave him 20 more, how many does Mohan have? She won't, she doesn't know what to do. She loves to paint and she can spend all day drawing dress designs and that's what she wants to be when she grows up, a dress designer. Her family and parents think she's just lazy. They think such a bright child, okay, she talks so much, she knows everything, but only when it comes to studies, she's just not bothered. She's only sitting, her book is full of dress designs. She's not written what she's supposed to write about her schoolwork. So they think she's just lazy. So my first question is, Aradhana lazy? What do you think? No. Okay, thank you. Absolutely not. Okay, she is not lazy. And please remember this. Children will do well if they can. So if a child is not doing well, there has to be a reason. Children don't fail on purpose. No child wants to fail. So if they are struggling, there has to be a reason. And this reason will either be within the child, not laziness, or it will be in the environment. And as pediatricians or therapists, it's our duty to find this reasons because only then can we help them if we know what the reason is. Okay, so as I said, there are two reasons for learning difficulties, something within the child or something within the environment. Now, how are we going to determine this reason? Of course, we have to take a detailed history and we'll talk more in detail about that. Just do this. Okay, I can hold it. Okay, uh, checking the child's academic work. I'm very happy when parents bring the child's exercise books with them. I always ask, you know, when they start telling me this child can't read, can't write, and so on, I said, have you brought the books? And if they bring the books, it's much easier to know why this child is struggling. And I'll show you samples of children's work to uh, understand that. The teacher's reports. I know it's hard sometimes to get in contact with teachers, uh, but what we do at Setu is we have a standard a uh, way of getting this information because teachers are very busy and it really helps if we make contact with the teachers in whatever minimal way possible we'll be talking more about how we do that uh, because the teacher knows what's happening in the classroom parents very often do not know and if we want to change something in the classroom no use telling the parents they can't do anything we have to connect with the teachers then of course hearing and vision uh, you know I always say when I die and I'm buried Please put it on my gravestone. Always get the child's hearing and vision tested for any learning or behavior problem. Because we have come across so many children who just have kind of, uh, you know, uh, otitis media or CSOM, and that is actually preventing them from paying attention, from following what the teacher is saying, from uh, following the teacher's instructions. Okay, so hearing and vision are very, very important, and it's simple to do. And of course, psychoeducational testing. I won't be going into the details. Any psychologists here who do clinical psychology? So please, ma'am, your name? So please contact Hema during the break. She will give you all the details of how to do psychoeducational assessment. Thanks, Hema. So let's go one by one. Let's start with the detailed history. So quickly, what kind of questions should we be asking? Just a couple. What do you want to know if this parent says my child is failing in school? What do you want to know? Right, okay, so is it only in academics or is it overall in everything? Excellent, yes. Anything else? What else do you want to know? Right, how long ago did this start? Right, okay, great, so. I think I'll just use this. Don't worry, computers hate me, so I'm used to it. Does that come on? Yeah, so the history. Um, when did the learning difficulty start? Is, if it's long standing, then it's more likely to be something within the child because child development starts even before birth, right? So therefore, those, all those causes, the first five causes which we had, it's more likely to be one of them. If the, and what about Aradhana? Do you remember? When did her difficulties start? right from preschool, so when she started school, okay? Whereas if it's of recent onset, and these are some of the common uh, kind of uh, situations. So transitions, you know, when a child is moving from preschool to primary school, when the child is moving from, uh, I think here primary is still fifth? Fifth? Till seventh? Okay, so uh, 
because in Goa it's fourth. So many of them, when they move from fourth to fifth, again, they said they're doing fine in primary school, but when they go to secondary school, there is a problem. Okay, and that's because the volume of the work, the way the teaching is done, uh, kind of differs, and also by that time, they're going more into abstract concepts. So if the foundation is poor, they're going to struggle. In primary school, they can learn by heart, and they can kind of pass. Okay, but when, once they go to middle and high school, they, it becomes more difficult. So, so all the transitions, then the change of medium. In Goa, a lot of our primary education, uh, these are schools run by the government, uh, is either in Marathi or in Konkani. But from fifth onwards, everyone moves to English. So therefore, you get this uh, problem in fifth. Many children in class five cannot read. And of course, trauma. So you know, we need to ask whether there was any uh, kind of death in the family or uh, any major illness or uh, even change of residence sometimes can, you know, because a child loses friends and it's a new school and, and so on. Okay, so if it's recent onset, it's more likely to be something within the environment. Right. As uh, Dr. Nischel said, is it only learning or is it all areas of development that are affected? So only learning, but please remember to ask about language. Why language? And I'm not talking about second language. I'm talking about language development. Anyone aware of the link between language development and learning? Hearing. That's a good point. Yes, hearing. Also, language uh, difficulties. So if the child has delay in development, language development, many of them are going to have learning difficulties. Okay, so when, when we talk about uh, language, there are actually four aspects of this language. So there's listening and understanding. So your hearing is very important there. Then is your speaking. You should be able to speak in that language. Then is your reading, and then comes your writing. So when children come to school, they're expected to read and write, correct? But if the listening and understanding and speaking is shaky, it's going to be very difficult for them to read and write because reading and writing is much more difficult than listening and understanding and speaking. And if a child has delay in listening and understanding and in speaking, definitely reading and writing is going to be affected. Hmm? So always ask about language development. Okay, and uh, the reason is this, that, you know, and parents are like, ah, bolta hai, abhi, uh, bolta hai, samajta hai, sab kuch samajta hai. But actually there is a language problem. So that's about uh, language. Motor development also, very often we find this, that you know, uh, parents will come, my child is not writing. Okay, actually the child is also not reading. But motor development is also linked to learning and problems with balance, okay, uh, not only fine motor, but even gross motor. I'm sure Dr. Nitish will see many of these uh, children. So they have a coordination difficulty, and later on it manifests as a learning problem. And of course, attention, which is important. So if they do have these difficulties, we have to think of a dyslexia or a specific learning disability, or even a specific, uh, sorry, a second language learning difficulty. So where I explain the medium of instruction is different from the home language. And of course, if it's all areas of development, then most likely we are dealing with a child with an intellectual disability. So the parent says uh, it's very hard for him to understand anything. We tell him many times, but he can't understand. Then if there's a family history or not, and of course we know that in dyslexia, in ADHD, okay, very often we see that there's a family history of learning problems. Quite often family history is due to lack of educational uh, opportunities in the previous generation, okay? So, you know, these were people who maybe lived in a rural area where there were no schools or out of poverty, they had to come out of school, and now they've kind of uh, earned better money and they have big aspirations for their children. Okay, so it's not always because of uh, learning disability or ADHD that the parents have uh, not completed their schooling or dropped out of school. So these are some of the kind of basic important points. We'll quickly run through the rest. Good health, okay, now if a child has asthma, for example, and hasn't slept, you know, that child is going to be very distracted and kind of uh, struggling in, in school. Sometimes children develop secondary illnesses to avoid school. So like headache, early morning headache, or stomach ache, you know, and crying, I can't go to school, it's paining, so parents say, okay, stay at home, and then miraculously at nine o'clock, all the symptoms disappear. And this child is able to, you know, watch TV and uh, do all the things that children of that age are, uh, love to do, okay? So find out if that pattern is there. 
Then, of course, has the child changed schools? Quite often, parents, uh, they do this because they'll go to a school and then, the, say, the child has a learning disability. After one year, two years, the school will realize. They'll say, child is not writing, child is not reading. Parents say, no, no, he does everything So my child is fine, no problem. So they say, see, we have to keep your child back. Okay, or we will give you TC, you go to another school. So they go to another school. In that school, they don't, don't tell, the parents don't inform about learning problems. Same pattern repeats again. Or it could be behavior issues. The child won't sit in place, the child is poking pencil to, uh, on the classmates or, you know, uh, kind of disturbing the, the class. So the teacher says, I can't handle him, there are 60 children in the class. Please take him to another school. So very often you find this pattern. So please ask. Frequent changes of school will tell you that the, most likely there's some behavior uh, problem or a learning problem in the child. So what has been tried? Because we need to know if this child has received any help. Of course, tuitions, for the most part, are just what is done in school is done again during tuitions. They don't see whether the child can really understand or what the child's level of difficulty is. Can the child really recognize alphabets? You know, we are trying to make the child read uh, five letter and ten letter words, but the child still can't recognize the alphabet. But the tuition teacher may not know that. Or there may be some specialized help. Maybe the child is getting some extra help in school also. So we need to know what has been tried. What is the child good at? In fact, when we take the history, this comes as the first thing. Why? Why do we want to know what the child is good at? What are the child's interests? Pura din of TV dekta hai. What should be our next question? Kya dekta hai? Thank you so much. Yes. So, uh, Scooby Doo dekta hai ya Pokemon dekta hai. Now what? If it's National Geographic or it is History Channel, then it's uh, easier, right? But he's only watching uh, cartoons and Chota Bheem. Or... Then what? We can still use that because we know that's what the child is interested in. So when we're teaching the child, we can use what the child is interested in to teach the child. For older children, these could be future career options, okay? And we know now how to build the child's self-esteem. Because if the child doesn't feel good inside, the child is going to think, ah, what's the use? I can't do it. So what's the point in trying? And if you have a child who doesn't want to try, you can't do anything, right? So we must know the child's strengths uh, so that we can build on, on those. And then, of course, if there are any emotional factors, both you know, primary, uh, the child is feeling anxious, feeling depressed, there's a family history of anxiety, long-standing history, or because of the learning disability and because very often these children are being bullied in the school, the teacher is shouting at them, they develop secondary emotional problems and this sense of that, I can't do anything, I, I, I will always fail no matter what. And then it's a, it's a bigger problem after that. OK, I, I'm sure you can't see that from the back. But one of the things we ask the parents to do is this um, Vanderbilt checklist. It's uh, freely available on the internet. OK, it's part of something called the ADHD toolkit, which is uh, by the American Academy of Pediatrics. So when we are assessing the child, generally we keep the parents outside. Because when the parents are watching, the minute the child makes them, we say, eh! They keep doing like this, and then the child gets all conscious. So we ask the parent to sit out, and we say, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to give you some work to do. And we ask the parent to fill this form. So this form has features of uh, different behaviors, uh, which uh, deal with inattention, restlessness, impulsivity, uh, emotional uh, uh, factors, and, and so on. And how much these are affecting the child's functioning. This is critical. How is the child functioning? If the symptoms, no matter how bad they are, they're not affecting the child's functioning. So the child is doing well in school, is happy in the house, listens to the parents, has lots of friends, is doing well in the community, uh, whether they go going to, uh, you know, whether they're in the temple or they're in a hobby class or whatever, then we don't have to worry too much. But even mild symptoms, if they're preventing the child from going to school or the child doesn't have any friends, okay, every hobby class is, no, 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 please take this child out, we can't manage, then that is a more serious Problem. So functioning is very important, and we ask parents to assess. Uh, and this form, as I said, is easily av available. You can get it translated also. So we finished with history. Now we're going to check the child's academic work. And I'm going to put up some <laughs> slides uh, 
some actual examples of work. I hope you can see that. So parents often say, my child cannot write. Okay, but if you go into the history, the child cannot read. Why, why do they say writing and not reading? Why, why are they more worried about writing? And they miss reading? Exams, you have to write. Writing can be seen. Na? Reading cannot be seen. So it's a very obvious manifestation of the child's difficulties. You can see the spelling mistakes. You can, you, or rather, you can't read what the child has written. That is obvious. But a child not being able to read, unless you assess yourself, it's not going to be obvious. So many children, uh, when, we, when parents come with writing difficulties, please ask about reading. And we can do a quick assessment using a simple passage. I'll show you a sample of that. Without pictures. Why without pictures? Yes, it becomes like a hint. Okay, so, and it shouldn't be too long because the child will not be interested in, in reading it. And then we ask questions based on that passage. So what we're looking at is decoding. So what do those letters over there, so now when you're reading this assessment of academic work, can the child read? You're decoding, so you know that this C-A-N is can, T-H is the, right? But you also have to understand. It's not enough just to decode. You also have to understand. <laughs> Good morning. So um, both these things have to be assessed. Then are there any writing problems? Again, a quick assessment. Choose any topic. My favorite sport, uh, you know, what I did during the holidays, uh, what I like to do in my free time. Just any simple topic and ask them to write one to three sentences, not a full essay. If the child has a difficulty, the difficulty will come out in those one to three sentences, okay? And, or you can also give dictation. So very often we take words from the child's reader because that's what the child has been exposed to and, you know, five to 10 words, uh, we ask them to, to write. And what do we look for? We look for how that is written, okay? So the form, uh, whether you can read those letters, are they on the line, any spelling mistakes, of course, and what kind of spelling mistakes? Can you make out what the child has written even though the spelling is wrong? Just by reading it, can you understand what the word is? Uh, the punctuation, of course, if it's a little passage, and what are the ideas that the child has expressed. So all this is very important. Then can the child do math sums? And as I said, we can give simple sums just with numbers as well as problems, simple problems, and whether the child knows what computation to do based on what the problem is asking for. In which languages or subjects is the child struggling? Now, if it is a second language, so the child is, so let's talk about Gujarati. The child is fluent in Gujarati and only because it's, uh, it's a new language, say English, the child is struggling. Okay, how will the child do in Gujarati in school? If it's a second language, the child will do well. Okay, so if the child is only struggling in English, then it's most likely to be second language. Because the child, you know, read the child's uh, Gujarati writing, all the matras and all, everything is fine. The child can read very well. The child can tell you what he or she has read. Then it's more likely to be second language. But if the child is having difficulty with all languages, so even though the child is fluent in speaking Gujarati, he is struggling with reading and writing Gujarati, then it's more likely to be specific learning disability. Okay, and of course, English the child is struggling with. Child is doing very badly in languages, but is doing well in maths. What could it be? Again, depending on the class. If it's a young class, uh, lower class where they can learn by heart, they can manage quite well in the mathematics, okay? Or if the child is doing badly across all subjects, so whether it's EVS or it's English or it's Mara uh, sorry, Gujarati or it is maths, what is the problem here? The child has an intellectual disability. If the child is doing, and of course, go into the history, you will find a long-standing uh, history of developmental delay. Okay, so this is the kind of problem solving how we uh, kind of analyze the situation. If you can get the exam papers, answer papers, great. Why not the exercise books? Why the exam answer papers? Why not just be satisfied with the exercise books of the child? 
most of the time it's what the child has copied from the board. So it's not their own writing. Okay, so sometimes if they have good handwriting, it looks quite fine actually what they've written. But it's in the exams that the problems come out because there it is the child's own work we, that, that comes out. Or sometimes the parents are doing the writing at home. You know, parents are the ones who are doing the homework rather than the child, okay? So uh, that, that's why we prefer to check the child's exam answer papers. But of course, not all schools give those. Right, so the quick assessment of reading and writing. Can someone read this for me, please? Any? Yes, please read. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. That was lovely. Okay, so now tell me, what is this passage about? Can you tell me in your own words? Yes, sure. Without looking. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, I just read it. Okay, <laughs> great. Thank you so much. Fantastic. So this is what happens. Because the child is focused on decoding. So what we do is, we say, okay. Now you read silently to yourself, and then I will ask you questions. Thank you so much. So ma'am, can you please read it to yourself silently? We didn't practice before. Like this is not a practice drama. It actually, uh, <laughs> it's actually scenario. And see, this is what actually happens in the clinic. When you are reading loudly, you are more focused on how you are reading. Yes. And tell me when you're ready, okay? Done? Yeah. Okay, great. So tell me, what is this passage about in your own words? What you... Yeah, uh, it says that uh, a boy, he was having a dog. Hmm. And uh, actually, the dog, uh, he ran into the wood. Yes. But he wanted the dog to go to uh, his home. Yes. Home. And then what happened? What, what happened to the dog? Was the dog listening to the boy? Yes, and then what did the boy do? Uh, he, um, he, he was running after the dog and he started to cry. Because he was not yes, so why do you think the boy started crying? Because he was not listening, the dog was not listening to him. Yes, so he was worried, right? Yeah, he was worried. What was he worried about, you think? Dog is out in the woods all by himself. What was he worried about? Yes, because he loves his pet. Okay. What animals live in the jungle? In the woods? Give me a couple. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Perfect, excellent. Okay, so what did I do? Thanks so much. Give her extra samosa, okay, for break. <laughs> I didn't bring my chocolates with me, sorry. Yeah, so what did I do? So I first I asked her to read loud, okay. Did you notice she said, because it was quite some time back, I'll tell you what. Here she says the, the dog wouldn't then go and then she says would not go home. That is called a self-correction, okay. She's made an error, it's would not, she said wouldn't, okay. And then she realized she went back and corrected. So that's a self-correction. What does it show? It shows that she is actually decoding well, but she's also reading for meaning. If a child self-corrects, that means they are reading for meaning. And reading for meaning is a critical skill. If there was a home, instead of home, she had said house, it makes no difference to the meaning. Okay, because it's the same meaning. But instead of home, she had said horse, it's going to change the meaning and probably it's not going to make sense. So this is what we listen for when the child reads. Okay, then I asked her questions. I asked her to paraphrase in whatever way she knows. So, for example, when I assess children, they, they will start English, then say, Konkani in Sangta. I'll tell you in Konkani. Fine. What does that mean? They can't do it in English, but they can do it in Konkani or maybe in Gujarati. What, what does that mean? Second language. Second language, exactly. So, they have been able to understand, sometimes dog, home, okay, they, some of common words, but they're not able to express. 
Okay, then I asked her detailed questions. So she did tell me a lot of details. Okay, and then I asked her, why was the boy crying? Is that in the passage? Why was the boy crying? Is that, is that here anywhere? No, so that is, what kind of question is that? Exactly. So the child has to infer that information from the, from the uh, passage. So it's not directly written there. So again, you're testing a higher level of the child's understanding. And then I asked her, which are the animals that live in the jungle? What is that? That tests her general knowledge. Okay, so just using this passage, so many things I can assess. Right, and it's not too big a passage, so it's not too scary for the child to do this big <laughs> test. Okay, now lower down, I hope you can see that, but this is a sorry sample of the child's writing, and the topic was, what did you do during your holidays? And what the child has written, I went to my FRIS, okay, some HORS, FORM, and so on. So then, I don't know what the child has written. So what do we do? We ask the child. Please, wonderful, you know, thank you, you've written three sentences, wonderful. Can you please tell me what you've written? And I will write here down. So the child said, I went to my friend's house for Christmas. So I, this is called scribing. You write what the child says. I celebrated Christmas party in my house. And I went visiting. So now this child has so many ideas. Okay, so this is a three-year-old child who's writing this? What do you think? Is it specific learning disability? Is it second language? What do you think? Is it intellectual disability? No, no, third standard. Yeah. So, what do you think? Is it second language? Think, see the ideas. I went to my friend's house for Christmas. I celebrated Christmas party in my house. I went visiting. So this is more likely to be specific learning disability. He's quite fluent in English, okay? But he can't, so his oral language is good, but he cannot read and write. So that is, uh, that is how you do the deduction. Okay, now you want to know whether the child's intelligence is normal or not, okay? So is this a, a slow learner or a child with intellectual disability? This is a quick test that we can do, the draw person test. It's great for three to 10 years. Most children love to draw themselves. Some children, of course, because they've been told you're not good at drawing, they'll say, I'm not good at drawing. I don't know how to draw. I said, see, whatever you do is fine for me. I would love to see how you draw, okay? So don't worry about right or wrong. There's no right or wrong over here. And this we must tell children before we start assessing them. So um, draw a person test and then there's a score, you can easily get that. We have to ask about the development from the parent, okay? Can the child solve el everyday problems? You know, sometimes children, they're so smart, they will tell the parent what needs to be done or they will, parent doesn't know how to use this app, the child will take it and in 10 seconds show them how, right? So can the child solve every everyday problems? Does the child do better in oral work compared to written work? Writing is hard, but you ask them orally, they will tell you a long, full Mahabharat story. Okay, and can the child tell a story in the correct sequence? Um, and does the child ask smart questions? You know, they will think and ask. So they will say, when there's no electricity, young children, no electricity in the house, how come the lights are there on the cars? Okay, or they may have noticed, like, how come first uh, we see the lightning and then the thunder comes? So like this, they have, they, they are, their minds are thinking like scientists. So these children definitely do not have an intellectual disability. Is there a second language problem? And this here, as I said, the medium of instruction is different. Lack of exposure to the medium of instruction. So there are no books in, generally it's English uh, at home. Nobody speaks English. And the child does better in whatever the Indian language is in the uh, school uh, compared to English. And here are some samples. I hope you can see that. So just look at this one. Okay, so sh draw a picture of a rainy day and write, write three sentences. So the girl is splashing, the girl is jumping, the girl is swimming. Anything you notice, all three grammatically correct sentences. Anything you notice about how it's written? Below the line. Why below the line? Yes. So this child is Marathi speaking at home, so they've done that. Okay, and look at this. Write four sentences about your home using the word has. My house has two big windows. My house has red color. My house has big tree. My house has big door. 
So this chunking again, okay, a, a kind of a repetitive way to writing, this is more characteristic of second language difficulties. Hmm? And because the child is not familiar with, you know, the different ways to construct a sentence. Okay, then as I said, check the schoolwork. So I'm going to read quickly what this child has written. So this is an essay on my school. My school is situated in the valley near a spring. So this is why the name of my school is Chubby Cheeks Spring Valley High School. There are 23 classes in my school and there are 36 teachers in my school. There are three helpers and there are 1,000 children. I am proud of my school. There are some cupboards in my school. There are private buses. There is one big ground, there are some computers. They teach me a lot to study. I love my school very much. So quickly, what are the difficulties? You can see the teacher has marked and this is in red. Half mark has been canceled for leaving a line between the two <laughs> paragraphs, poor girl. So, uh, so this is Aradhana's sample. So what would you say about, quickly, what, how is the child written? I think I have a, well, okay, let's talk about the child's intelligence first. Is this an intelligent child? What do you, definitely, right? Think of this, I mean, look at the ideas, the private buses and grounds and computers, so she's got it all. Okay, what about the second language difficulties? Does this child have second language difficulties? No, hmm? because she's quite, you can make out from her thinking that she, she knows how to construct sentences. So what is this? Oh, sorry, what are the mistakes? Okay, yes, so punctuation is one thing. What about this? Chubby cheeks this is. Chubby. Mirror image, so B for D, yes. Can you read? See, I could read what she's uh, written. Can you read? Yeah. Correct? So when you can read, that means this child has some uh, knowledge of what letters make which sounds, what we call letter sound association, because she's spelling phonetically. A bit some, of course, mirror images over there. Okay, so for example, cupboard down here. Okay, that is cupboard. Okay, private. So she's spelling P R A I V E T. It should be spelled that way, actually, right? So, uh, <laughs> so she's spelling phonetically. So she has some knowledge of letter sound. Okay, numbers. So read from the top. So she said, add the following four digits: one nine two four. That's supposed to be plus one one two eight. She's got zero eight zero zero. What has she done? I wish we had more time, but I'll tell you. Eight minus Oh, sorry, 4 minus 8. 4 minus 8 must be 0. <laughs> 2 minus 2, very easy, 0. 9 minus 1, easy, 8. And 1 minus 1, 0. So answer is 800. Okay, then go further. Subtract the following. 2496 minus 1045. What has she done? Added. She has added. So this child is really confused with the signs as well as with the computations. Hmm? Problems. So if the cost of one dress is 1,212, I want to go to this shopping mall and find out where these dresses are, only 1,212. What is the cost of nine such dresses? So nine must be more. One is so much, nine will be more. So what do I do? I write one, two, one, two. I add nine and I will get the answer. Okay, so again, difficulty knowing what to do based on what the problem is asking for. Okay, so. Just to sum up, Aradhana has long-standing difficulties. She's English speaking at home. The medium of instruction is also English. She's a very bright child. There's no emotional trauma, or no change of school, no behavior problems, and she has difficulty across the board in reading, writing, spelling in all languages. Actually, the previous one, which I missed, that was in Konkani. You know, you may not be able to read it, but you can read all the zeros over there. So she's uh, struggling in all the languages. Okay, so we finished teachers. Sorry, now we're coming to teacher's report. So again, we use the same Vanderbilt form. There's a parent form and there's a teacher form. So we send the teacher's form to the school. Teacher doesn't have to waste much time. They just have to circle no, sometimes, often, and very often. And so it won't take them more than uh, five minutes. Very important to connect with the teacher, as I said earlier. Uh, we can know more about the learning difficulties in the school. We can know about behavior problems, and especially when we're looking at ADHD, emotions, peer relations, and this form asks for all this. Okay, so, so from a simple form, we can get all this information. We don't have to call up the teacher or go and visit her. And it's the first important step in working with the school. 
You can do anything you like with a child. But if you don't try to change the system within the school, don't try to educate the teacher so that she can then help not only that child but more children, there's very little really difference that we are going to make. So we, we are committed to working with schools. Of course, sometimes teachers will be grumbling. They'll tell the parent, this child has to leave the school. So, you know, parent comes desperate. Then we send this form, and when the form comes back, the child is perfect. No behavior problem, no learning problem. The teacher has not marked any problem. Why is that? They don't want to complain in writing. They're scared that tomorrow someone will look at that form and say, you know, you are the one who was grumbling. But, of course, that's uh, not a very common scenario. But we have to be prepared for that, too. Then hearing and vision, as I said, mandatory. Parents must be convinced. How do I convince them? Who wants to go for a high checkup and hearing checkup? Right? They want you to help their child. So I say, see, this is very important. If we miss this, it is a crime because these things can be easily corrected. You can either put on a pair of glasses or a hearing aid or clean the ear. These are very important. I don't want that on my conscience to have missed a hearing or vision assessment. I think it's a crime on my part. So if you don't want to take your child, no problem. It's your child. You are the expert of your child. But please sign on my paper saying that for whatever reason, you didn't want to take your child. They say, no, no, sorry, doctor. We'll go. We'll go. OK, so uh, I'm pretty forceful about this because I've seen kind of so many children with hearing and vision difficulties with learning problems. So an ENT checkup, an eye checkup. And we have to check the written reports. Ask them to bring the reports. Very often say, ha, kia, kia, but they've not done it. Sab kuch theek hai. They've not done it. So we are like the police over here. Psychoeducational testing, I'm not going to go into the details. We have to check for intellectual functioning. So there are many, many tests. We use the WISC, the Vessel Intelligence Scale. Processing, how is that information being processed within the brain? Okay, so you can use the Bender Gestalt test. We uh, sometimes use the Ann Arbor. And the achievement test, the child's performance. So there's a Woodcock-Johnson. We at Seto use curriculum-based tests. Because what we found is many of these commercial tests, all our children are doing badly. Because they're at a certain level. All of them do very well, like the wide range achievement tests at a very low level. So we do, you take, take the child's curriculum, and we've con constructed. And there's, it's all available on the internet, how to construct these tests. And finally, we want this to be done in the schools. We don't want the children to come all the way to see us. This is something that can be done in the school, and you know, the, much more likely than the children will be assessed, detected, and helped uh, in the school itself. So Aradhana's final assessment, she has above average intelligence on the IQ test. She had problems with visual and auditory processing. And on her curriculum-based test, she was struggling with reading. She can express herself in writing. You saw that essay, but it was full of spelling mistakes, and she was very poor in maths computation. So, which of these does Aradhana have? Is it a specific learning disability, intellectual, ADHD, hearing vision, emotional distress? What? Specific learning disability. She's bright, so no intellectual disability. On the ADHD checklist, both filled by the parents and the teachers, no problem there. Hearing and vision was normal. She's a happy child, OK? No trauma in the family. As I said, second language, it was, anyway, she was speaking English at home. It was an English-speaking home, plus she was studying in English. And this is a good school, so uh, we know that it wasn't due to poor teaching. So what is SLD? SLD is in the brain, okay? It's not due to bad teaching. It's not due to second language. It is how the child processes information in the brain. And they have difficulties in all academic subjects, or so maybe uh, even one of these. So sometimes children can read but they have difficulty in writing, okay? So it's not necessary that all these have to be affected. Uh, and as I said, it's uh, problems in processing that information within the brain, and 10 to 15% of children uh, have SLD. Uh, where does it happen? So when we read, when, when you all are reading right now, three parts of your brain are active. So your, all the letters you're actually processing in your occipital lobe, what they look like and identifying them. The sounds of what you're reading, so you're, you're, when you're reading, where in the brain does reading happen? There's a kind of a voice in your brain reading that, right? So that the sounds processing happens in the temporal lobe. And the meaning of it is extracted from your frontal lobe. So, uh, uh, Broca's editor. So all this is happening while you are reading. So if there's any problem in this processing, and most often 
it is in the temporal lobe, okay, uh, children are going to struggle. Now, I'm just going to quickly run through early signs in preschoolers because though we don't diagnose specific learning disability in preschoolers, many signs come up right then. So as I said, delay in speech development. Many of these children have difficulty in rhyming. So if I say fat, give me a rhyming word. Fat, cat, mat, bat, right? Okay, but if you say fat, they may say fit. They haven't discovered or they, they're not able to give you a rhyming word. Fine motor difficulties, especially things like buttoning, tying shoelaces. Uh, they take very long to learn the colors, to learn to identify the letters and the numbers. Confusion with the sounds of the letters. When they write, you know, there's a certain way that we write. So A is like this, right? I mean, that's how we should be taught. But they will maybe write it like this. They will write a C like this. S, they may write like this. And quite often, that itself causes confusion. Uh, so that's what we call directionality. Quite often, they have restlessness and short attention span. This could be ADHD itself, or it could be secondary to a learning problem. And sequencing, putting things in the right order. So before, after, very confused. Then they tell a story all jumbled up. Okay, so it's hard for them to sequence. Please get help early. It's very scary for parents, and therefore they will resist when we say that you know your child needs to go for an assessment or your child has a learning disability and we have to remediate. So we have to recognize this fear. And that's why we start with strengths, that this child is bright, or this child, you know, is very active, or this child wants to learn, okay. But these are the problems, and no child is doing it on purpose. It's nobody's fault. I think this sentence, if you say, it'll be very reassuring to the family, as well as the teacher, as well as the child. It's nobody's fault. Um, early intervention is a better chance of success. In fact, uh, they say that if a child is struggling with reading, and by third standard, we haven't been able to help the child to overcome this, this child is probably going to struggle for life. Okay, so early intervention is very crucial. And uh, if you have a special educator, great, but even general teachers can, with special training can do this. Uh, do you all have a certification here in Gujarat that they will get disabilities if they, uh, disability benefits? Okay, so, you know, f um, not all centers are recognized. For example, Setu is not recognized. It has to be a government hospital. But we do the assessment so that they get an accurate uh, assessment because you know in the government hospital it will be like a one hour or maybe half an hour assessment and that's it. Um, it because we want also maybe examination concessions we have to support the child and family each of us is an advocate for the child and especially if the school is asking the child to leave or they are you know uh, kind of um, not getting uh, not agreeing to give the child benefits the child definitely needs the help of the therapists and the doctors. Okay, thank you. How much did I run over my time? Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much. And uh, sorry for going like the Rajdhani, but I hope uh, there were some uh, points that made sense. And it is something, as I said, that even at our level in the outpatient, we should already have an idea of why this child is doing badly. And of course, then we refer them to the educational psychologist to get the further information. Thank you so much.